Hi, this is Professor Paul Knopfler here at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'm a stem cell and cancer biologist, and I primarily do research in the lab, but I also do educational outreach, including like these videos that I'm doing. And I'm going to try to do a new feature, which is like a weekly answering a reader's question because I run a blog called The Niche. And I get a lot of patients, especially reaching out to me with questions, I'm not a physician. So that's kind of a disclosure. I don't give medical advice, but as a stem cell biologist who's been following a lot of uh, sketchy stem cell clinic stuff over the years, readers uh, of the niche do reach out a lot with questions. And so I wanted to today uh, do the weekly uh, uh, answer of a, uh, a reader's question, focusing on this really sad case of a guy who died in Mexico after going to a stem cell clinic. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and just show you this post that I did recently about this. Um, a really sad case. Uh, not such an old guy uh, went down with a friend to a clinic in Mexico, getting an unproven stem cell therapy. I call these unproven because I don't believe there's really solid clinical trial data to support with a lot of these clinics. Uh, both in the US and other places are, are giving to people. And I should say giving in quotation marks in a sense, because um, these are really expensive. In most cases, they can be anywhere from five to $100,000 a pop. So um, big, big costs involved, even when things don't go wrong. And in this case where the, the guy passed away, uh, we we really don't know what happened. He He received some unproven stem cells for a variety of health conditions. And then it seems like that evening uh, had uh, his heart just stopped and he died. So uh, it's one of these things where it's kind of unclear. And, and this is where the reader question comes in. Like they basically were asking me, could this just be a coincidence, you know, and the, the man's heart stopping having uh, nothing to do with the stem cells. And of course, that is a possibility, but we really don't know. And this kind of situation makes me wonder how often this... Um, these kinds of events might happen after people go to stem cell clinics and we just don't know about them. I just stumbled on this one by chance. Uh, and if all things just via Google search, a surfer magazine popped up because um, uh, this guy sort of was part of friends with and part of a community of surfers. And they were talking about how he had passed away after their, um, he and this, I guess, somewhat famous surfer um, Shane had gone down there uh, to to get some stem cells. So to answer the reader's question, it's not clear. You know, this could be coincidence, but um, there there are a lot of adverse events at clinics. And for instance, the Pew Trust did a study uh, that they published um, looking at basically bad things that happen after people go to stem cell clinics. And it's really sad they were able to find twenty instances of deaths. Um, after people had gone to stem cell clinics. So, um, you know, coincidence, maybe we don't know. Um, this particular place down in Tijuana, I sort of heard indirectly that, you know, they will look into this, but um, more generally, it's sort of in the clinic's interest to, to not really, you know, give much attention to things when, um, when things go wrong. Oftentimes when people go to clinics, the clinics don't really do close follow-up on them. So if something does go wrong, uh, we, we don't know um, that there will actually be careful follow-up and collection of data on adverse events and publishing of that data or making it available. So it's really hard to track what's going on at the clinics. Um, and, you know, I, I really think it is, is a question of people, you know, really should be aware and be careful. Um, and I should say that um, this is not specifically about Mexico because here in the US, we have around 2000 of these clinics selling unproven stem cells. And there's really a drastic range of these clinics. Uh, some of them, uh, as much as I may disagree with what they're doing, they're actually FDA compliant. And, and some of the physicians there know what they're doing in terms of the actual procedures. They know, you know what a stem cell is but hundreds of others really don't really know much about stem cells. They seem to be more into it uh, to make money. And so I think, uh, you know, just the question of whether or not uh, stem cells cause problems, like in this case, they could have in theory uh, caused uh, an embolism to form or something like that. You know, there's a lot of sort of gray area about uh, that kind of situation. 
uh, I encourage you to check out this post because there's there's a lot to think about. There's uh, quite a few comments there, including from um, a uh, a person identifying as the uh, deceased guy's uh, brother-in-law, and a lot of discussion there. Uh, the topic of MSCs came up. I, I, you know, it's not entirely clear to me what uh, was used in this case, what kinds of cells, but there's a lot to think about. So I encourage you to 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 take a look at that. And again, this uh, site, my site is at ipsl.com. And so this was uh, my uh, uh, answer to the reader question. I'm going to try to do this hopefully about once a week if I have time. I've been really busy with grant writing. But I, I like to get answers back out to people who reach out with questions almost 100% of the time. Um, and this is mostly by email, but sometimes by phone as well. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the videos on our stem cell channel here, please subscribe and go ahead and stop sharing and I'll see you next time. Thank you.